Oh, Star Wars fans. Hey, you know, there's just 166 days until Christmas 2022. <laughs> and uh, happy to be with you here today. Uh, yes, we have a new intro. Uh, it's, it's a bit long, but I love it. So we're going to go with it. <laughs> hey, how That's you doing, she said. <laughs> That's what she said. That's exactly right. How Meg. about my vocals on that intro, though, guys? Right? <laughs> I sound great. So good, so good. Hey, uh, we've got we've got some just fun uh, stuff to talk about today, uh, and and again, we're kind of in a lull between uh, Star Wars uh, shows, and there's a lot of stuff that uh, is coming, but we're kind of waiting for it. So uh, when that happens, people invent things to talk about, or they rehash things that uh, are old. So there's some of that as well. I got something real to talk about this week, but I don't want to, I don't want to put it out too early and then, you know, get the bees flying around the nest a little bit. Right, so, right, yeah. right. Yeah, very we'll good. On, we'll have a little something on Friday, I think. Oh, a little something, something, something on Friday. On Friday. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, there's, there's some somewhat light news and today is, today is, uh, I, I guess the day to talk about it. Uh, is that HasLab project ended last night. So we've had yeah. two HasLab projects in a row. Uh, this, those are Hasbro's kind of, for anybody that doesn't know, that's Hasbro's kind of crowdfunding projects. Okay. And uh, it, it, they they switch between all kinds of different uh, products. They've had Ghostbusters and Star Wars and G.I. Joe and you name it. So uh, in this case, we've had two Star Wars Black Series projects announced by HasLab uh, in a row that have failed spectacularly. Uh, oh, no. Like, <laughs> like, like really bad? Like not even close bad? Yeah, not even close bad. This Ooh. was, uh, they needed 5,000 to back it. Okay. And uh, they had less than 2,000. Oh, so, that's not reading the room. That's not reading the room. <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> and as and the, someone who doesn't read the room a lot, I get you where you're coming from, Hasbro. But come on, yeah. The the, the deal here is <laughs> that it, right. It's it's not reading the room. That's 100 percent the problem, Jason. Is that uh, there there were cool projects. I mean, the first one was the Rancor, and it got close, but it failed by a few hundred. Okay. And one of the big things with it is it the the unlocks that came after you fund it. People really didn't buy into. And so it didn't get them excited for it. And so yeah. it it only kind of got some core collectors and it didn't get enough hype to add on. Uh, unlike the the HasLab uh, Razorcrest, that thing funded in like 24 hours, just under 24, I think like 21 hours, something like that. So like it, everyone's like, we want iPods. Remember those? And they're like, we got Zunes. We <laughs> Yes. Remember those? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so there's, there's, um, with the, with the Rancor, it was a Black Series figure. It's huge, right? Absolutely huge because Black Series are six inch scale versus the three and, uh, you know, three quarter scale vintage collection. So yeah. it's like double the size, but, uh, it, it just didn't have enough to make people, you know, inspired to fund it. And with this, uh, Riva's, lightsaber so you got a grand inquisitor or, or in, an inquisitor lightsaber yeah. which is a is a neat design in and of itself but uh not reading the room is the is the is the key mm -hmm. like for most people who are familiar with the inquisitors they've watched rebels the the second is the, of course with the kenobi show and so yeah. they were banking on Riva being extremely popular and people wanting that as part of their collection. Mm -hmm. And there was some of that for sure, but there's some features of Grand Inquisitor Sabres that just didn't, they weren't present. So like, a, like, did it have like a, like a magnetic back bra where I could like put it on my back? No. Nope. Like click. No. Nope. Well, come on, Hasbro. I know. I know how 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 silly. Like <laughs> there is that. There's also, uh, you know, they have the half uh, moon hilt that mm -hmm. then opens up to the the full circle. Right. Uh, it had both hilts, but it was all like configuration. You had to, mm -hmm. you know, click it in, and it, it didn't just fold and unfold. Yeah. And then the biggest feature of of a an inquisitor lightsaber is the spinny spinny action there, right? 
<laughs> like, yeah. uh, and, and it didn't do that at all. So no, no propulsion or anything, huh? Nothing. You can't fly with it or anything. No. <laughs> Whatever has, bro. <laughs> Didn't even have a fan to like, you know, blow air to make it look like you were flying. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, so that would, that would be a cool fan though. If they just had like, a, like, a, like a fan for your desk, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just, you know, it, and it was $500 and, and, and just for like context, yeah, you can get their, they, they've got their, uh, force effects sabers. So like my Ray saber here, it's like 250 bucks and right. it, it's a great, it's a great saber or you can go to like, uh, and I, I've, I've showed this last week. You can go down and have a custom saber built again, like 250 bucks. Uh, Matt, not Matt, cheap. Matt Risman was telling me you could get Kamal Nanjiani to come and pretend to be a robot for 500 bucks. <laughs> so that's, that's, a lot you can do with it. it. That's true. That's true. And I, and there's a lot of these that are, uh, uh-oh, <laughs> Meg. Meg is up to no good again. Uh, so, and, and, and then, of course, there's legacy sabers that you can get for like 200 bucks. So oh, these is, are that all... Ray, is that Ray Skywalker's lightsaber? I... <laughs> It's, it's, cool. Indeed, it's Ray Skywalker's lightsaber. Uh, that, that, everybody knows it is that. So um, it's just that this saber was $500. Yeah. And it was, um, you know, it's basically two lightsabers, but it's the same lightsaber, like, connected together. It'd be like getting Maul's lightsaber and paying double for it because it's, you know, double-ended. And yeah. it's just, I think it was... Uh, and and no unlocks, no no no, no extras, like yeah. th there weren't any bonuses for you meeting don't, you the. Don't, you don't get his little badge. You could like take it off and go. Oh, I'm Grand Inquisitor. You know that would be good too, right? Yeah, I I actually have that. They before Lucasfilm hated me. They actually sent me that one time. Really? Back during Rebels, yeah, they made it like internally, and I can't find it, but I know I have it. Amazing. I want to put it on here when I'm on your show and be like, oh, I can do what I want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, and there's X-Wing. I saw X-Wing uh, X covered this as well. But hey, picky Nikki. It's just that for $500, <laughs> I, it, it was priced too high to have uh, the value proposition. There's uh, something that I always mention when it comes down to selling merch. There's two key things that, that sell merch. One is it's cool. Two is it's cute. So yeah. th this went for the cool factor, except it wasn't enough cool for $500. I want a, I want a giant uh, Black Series Obi-Wan Kenobi sushi restaurant. Place that. <laughs> I know, that. So there you go, Jason. That's a question I was going to ask of folks today watching. And if you're watching this after the fact, what... Hasbro, uh, Haslab, Black Series project, would you back? So it's a, a Black Series. Now, Vintage Collection, yeah. those those are easy to come up with. And it, 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 there's a long list of them that people would back and jump straight in. But Black Series, Black Series, Star Wars, Haslab project. What what would the, be the thing that would get you excited to hmm. to pay five hundred dollars for and so x week i know you're in the chat what what would do it for you and and i know there's other collectors that are with us and while while we let people ponder let's oh there you go there you go i saw x wings already responded so uh, uh meg here we go said i heard a rumor that i was hoping to get your opinion on it claims your milkshakes bring all the boys to the yard can you affirm or deny such a claim? Yours in faith, Meg. That's why I'm here. <laughs> oh, Meg. Um, no, it's not true. It's not. <laughs> I will deny. I will deny that claim. Uh, and, and thank you so much for your support. I love you so much, my friend. Uh, and Nikki, Nikki, jumping in on the fun. Most Inquisitor sabers look the same. Why do they think anybody would care about this one? Uh, pet 500 if I can marry Poppins my way around. There you go. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and that's what you, you, like, how hard would it be to make, like, the the shoulder strap backpack thing that it, as a magnet you can put on under your shirt mm -hmm. or blouse or whatever, you know, your cloak, and then attach that thing to it magnetically. <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying, right? <laughs> just something like that. Uh, and, and then a and and then for unlocks, right? For unlocks, you get the you get that holster, so to speak, whatever you call yeah. that. 
uh, and you know, maybe a, a belt clip, and maybe the Grand Inquisitor badge, and maybe you know things like that. To be to be like devil's advocate to maybe give give Hasbro a slight break here. It would not surprise me if when it came time to start to develop what they can do with the Kenobi property, Lucasfilm was like, here's four things you could look at. You know what I mean? And Lucasfilm yep. probably pointed them in the direction of doing that specifically by only allowing them to, you know, like I, I've heard of them doing those meetings in the past where they're like, here's your options. BB9E looks really cool, right? And then they're like, yep, we're going to do BB9E because that looks like that's the big thing. And it's not, you know? Right, but, right. But but also from Kenobi, though, wasn't a lot you could really have, have done from that. Like, no. like, like a Kenobi robe or something? I don't even know what you really could have done, Like, uh, which wouldn't really be a Hasbro thing. So I don't really know what you could have actually have really made in that line from that. that no, the only thing, and they went mainline with it, was um, Lola. Right. Yeah. And that being mainline, then you take that off the table. What else is there left really um, that that would be a HasLab, you know, 500. So Meg says she would like uh, she would pay that for Luminar and Dooley's lightsaber. Mm. That's interesting. Snoke's starship Jedi Mike. Hilarious. You know how big that would be? <laughs> like a Black yeah. Series scale? Like that'd be bigger than your car. That would... yeah. <laughs> Did jar a Naboo uh, fighter in six inch? Now that again, that a six inch Naboo like a scale, six inch scale uh, Naboo starfighter would be quite large. All right, all right. Hear me out here. Hear me out here. Remember the original Ewok Village, original Ewok Village, Black Series scale with the Black Series Ewoks. I'd buy that. There you go with the unlocks. Right, you get mm -hmm. the you get the uh, Ewoks. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. a Bantha. That. Uh, that's another good idea. So there's there are things that they just need to be better in touch. Like you said, read the room, right? Yeah. There, there's yeah, just talk, talk to your to your customers, like on the internet, who will, will be backing your concepts. I mean, yeah, exactly. I, I mean, uh, I mean, couldn't, couldn't they also throw a couple out there and let people vote on on those, and then go forward with what's going to be like, you know what I mean? Kind of do a runoff, so to speak. Right. Or, uh, that's exactly right. And and not reading the room, not knowing your customer and, and the timing. Like one thing you could argue about the, uh, a rancor mm -hmm. is it should have been released after the book of Boba Fett. And yeah. then you could throw in say the book of Boba Fett, Boba figure that we're going to get carded anyway. Right. And you could start to throw some other things in, uh, X-Wing black series, Gaffy stick. There you go. Uh, again, there are some ideas, right? Uh, people oh, just have... dance. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, 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 smite your enemies with it. Yeah. I, I, I smite you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, every parent, uh, you know, with, oh, how about with the a uh, Rancor Keeper cowl so we can just take our shirts off and be like, look, we got the whole costume. <laughs> like, don't smite your brother with the gaffy stick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Uh, this uh, <laughs> our friend Baymax sent this to me. Uh, yeah, Haslab fails. It's just they, you know, they just totally uh, misread the room. And yeah. I think that they, uh, I, our friend Tim from um, from uh, what's his channel? Jeez, uh, <laughs> Timmy's Star Wars. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! I know his name. I know it. Uh, 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 it's uh, dang on it. He, he big vintage. Uh, Timmy the Tauntaun. <laughs> tauntaun <laughs> no, 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 uh, no. <laughs> okay. uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, uh, oh shoot, Tattoo it'll come to me. It'll tattooing. come to me after. It'll come to me after the fact. <laughs> uh, but but in any effect, uh, uh, it, the the Has Lab they could come up with just a vintage collection line, and I I suggested it should just be. Uh, uh, has lab, uh, the, the vintage collection, right? It should just be that. Um, yeah, so uh, there because the list is long and they could definitely uh fund so many, so many things. So, Bosk's bounty that's it, Bosk's bounty. bounty, yes, yeah, yeah, 
best best uh i, I always think about i i, I know boss bounty but i never think never think of the name yeah I like like how you put it you're like totally threw me to the loop yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, at blasters a, a lot of people have mentioned blasters uh but there's a problem with blasters of course um yeah. anything that looks anything like an actual um gun of any kind uh will get will, will cause problems there was a famous case in uh canada happened a couple mm -hmm. years ago where somebody was going you know dressed up as a like han solo and they had his blaster and they're going through the, they parked the car and they're walking through the parking lot and somebody called them in and uh, all of a sudden police are there. They're laying on the ground. Like, you know, it's, it's yeah. Luke, Santa, I legit think I saw you. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. I saw him here. I, I legit think I saw you recently. Also live in Ohio. Luke, it's possible. I live in Ohio, central Ohio. Uh, it uh, the, the last couple of weeks, I would say no. Cause we went to Orlando and then I came back with the, uh, with the COVID and we're came still voting. With the China virus. I did. I and then, and then we're, we're, uh, still testing positive this morning. So I'm still on the lockdown. Uh, yeah. and then after that, I'll be able to go out again, but, uh, yeah, it, it, it's very possible. So I am getting better. It's, uh, I've just got very, very minor, uh, like sinus stuff. Sort of like you would have on a very light uh, uh, allergy day, like mm. not bad at all. Uh, yeah. yeah. So. Oh, Haslabs, Blue Shadow Virus, COVID vaccine. How about that one? <laughs> right. Actually, only a Canadian would call the the fuzz because of a DL44. Well, I, I'm afraid X Wing that that's not only Canadians. All right. There are there are uh, what, what Karens here in the U.S. that would absolutely uh, did, freak did out. You, did you have the original N Nintendo um, back in the day? My friends did. I had an Odyssey 64. Oh, you had the Odyssey? Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had um, I, I, I had the original one, and, like, the light gun was, like, gray. And then, and no, they didn't even make light guns anymore, like, games for it by, like, right. mid-wave. But then they changed all of the light guns or zappers, as they called them, to, like, this orange color after, right. like, some incidents started happening. But but if you had the gray one, you were cool. If yeah. you had the, if you had the orange one, oh, you got the orange one. All right, cool, yeah. Good for you. Exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. I got the original. Uh, no, <laughs> I wasn't cool enough to have an actual Nintendo. Uh, well, we were we were so poor. I mean, it just didn't happen. But yeah, yeah. Uh, so so Haslab that that happened. Um, Haslab happened. It's or it's, or didn't happen. And I I agree with X Wing. Like they should go back to voting. Like. And do it, you know. They could, they could easily do it like a March Madness kind of deal, where you've got brackets and say, you know, here are eight. Let's just, you know, narrow it down like, to eight. Like series ET. And, and, yeah, and then you could Cannon. you could pair them off, right? And then mm -hmm. uh, whichever one wins, you get to the the final, and this is the this is the next Haslab project. And, and you, by then, you've already created some support. You've been listening to the fans. You've been reading the room. And you've got ideas for your unlocks. Right? It's become a thing with, with HasLab. You expect the unlocks. And yeah. it just... Ah, yeah. Now, TVC, again, the line is long. The line is long. Uh, Derek says, Bo-Katan ship. Of course, the ghost. The ghost is... is very low hanging fruit. My goodness. Uh, oh, easy. Everybody wants it. Everybody. It, <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. it's been in Rogue One. It was in. It made a cameo in uh, Rise of Skywalker. Of course, it's the main vessel in Rebels, and it promises to reappear in the Filoni verse. Uh, it's going to be. What if they called show. it the Jason Sindula Conception Love Nest? What if they called it that? There you go. Right? But it was easy sold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People will get it. <laughs> and we know our friend Mark, uh, Mark Hamilton, uh, has has made a vow that if he got uh -huh. the TVC ghost, he would never ask for another Hasbro figure ever again. I, I, he made Bullshit the vow. Bullshit artist. <laughs> yes. Sorry. That, that, that's from a movie that, that we like. 
Sorry. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Uh, this is Strangler. Yeah. See it. <laughs> There you go. Uh, and other news. There's a Kenobi fan at it. Uh, this has been making its way around. And yesterday, of course, uh, it made it onto Nerd Theory. They talked about it last night. So, of course, a big portion of the fandom's talking about it. Uh, have you watched that fan edit yet? A little bit. I, I, I got it, and I just, like, made sure it worked and stuff. And I watched, like, the first, you know, like, 20 minutes of it or so. And I was like, okay, you know, it is... Um, I'm I'm not as in love with it just off the bat as as some people are, and a little bit of the additions kind of threw me a little bit. But I mean, it's it's good work. I'm not I'm not knocking it at all. I think it's that's like a fan project. It's really good. Oh, I I would absolutely. <laughs> Nikki, Nikki is uh is great. Yeah, yeah. I I am I am learning. I it's it's coming along. Um, I, yeah. I watched the I watched the fan edit. And a lot of it is great. I am absolutely great. Like the, the whole chase scene with Leia, the way he cut it into just like, Hey, I'm, I'm here. Uh, I, I'm going to capture you. And then thunk, the hoods on boom. She's captured yeah. just capture like that. Stat. Put her in a capture stat. Get her out. of Perfect. Here. It was yeah. perfect. Uh, it, it, there's other scenes in there that uh, likewise, uh, he cut down to remove some of the, the fluff in there. Yeah. And it improved it enormously. Um, th- some other things suffer, though. And I'll say it's, it suffers only because it doesn't give it enough time. Um, it, I, are, we, are we watching the fan thing? No, we, we, we're doing it early because it's, it's topical for today. But uh, there's, a, key, there's, a, there's a, a, a sequence later on. When Reva it, it comes to report to Vader, and uh, the the, uh, the classic, I've got them tied on the end of a string kind of idea, right? Like, mm-hmm. I've got the tracker on there. We're going to get him. And he's like, are you sure? She's like, yep, 100%. Wherever he goes, it will go. Very good. So that, it cuts from that. We get one short scene uh, in between, and then it goes right back to her coming back in, like, she left and came back in like it's back to back and it's like wait like those two scenes shoved so closely together without any other context around it is a little jarring to me again this is like for everybody the mileage varies we've talked about this before your your mileage may vary on that but yeah. but, but there are some places where it could have breathed a little more but I get that the guy was going for two and a half hours, right? Yeah. If your cutoff is two and a half hours and you got to, you know, clip it there, I get what happened. But it, going 245 may have worked a little better. So it, it, allowing it a little more time to breathe in between those two scenes would have been better for me. But, dude, the, the, the guy did a, a, a fantastic job. I thought uh, uh, overall mm-hmm. it worked much better. But um, I'm if if I had to say which do I like more, like the the series or the fan edit, that's a tough call for me because, like I've mentioned, some of those clips were were too jarring for me. But overall, I thought he did a good job. I, I heard that he restored the Qui Gon sequence that was cut that was altered in the final edit. Oh yeah. How did that play? Did that play well? Because that's what it I did. Was, yeah, it did play well. Um, and cutting the part of Reva after uh, Vader cuts her through mm-hmm. and leaves her laying on the ground leaves that open ended. Right? She's dead or she's not dead. You don't have confirmation either way. Right? Yeah. You could presume that she's dead, but you, but when you last see her, she's still breathing. And she's kind of. Um, you know, laying on the ground kind of uh, in agony and it cuts away. You'd never revisit her again. Yeah. That's it actually, I think works better. It cuts out all the, the Luke chase scene at the end and questions about why, what's her motivation to chase Luke at that point, Uh, all of it. And it leaves open for Reva's story to continue afterwards. Should you decide to do that? but it doesn't introduce some of the problems there were. Um, 
like you, I don't necessarily like that he added Duel of the Fates into the battle with, with Vader. Mm-hmm. But um, I do think it did a good job uh, uh, in, in putting Qui-Gon in there. Like, he's the chosen one. That was good. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. N- Nari's head uh, cut off was a little too much. I thought they didn't need to do that. Um, it's okay. Sorry, Nari. Yeah. <laughs> it's even worse. <clears throat> uh, um, yeah, the uh, the uh, I want to pick on Nikki for one second because it's that time of day. Okay. Um, no, the uh, the uh, thing with it though is that it really is just the edit itself. It's not like Lucasfilm elongating a movie into a six hour show. Like the version that was a movie and the version that we got are are not the same thing. Completely rewritten from the ground up. Yeah. With a complete revision in every single way twice it was it was first it was adapted then it was completely redone and so it's like at the end of the day the editors keep doing this making this mistake where they they do standard tv editing for star wars and it's it's not applicable star wars is faster than standard tv and i got like my go-to is that book of boba fett moment where we have that dude in the car yeah 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 uh, the, the tentacles yeah. it's just like they cut that like it was uh an episode of hill street blues or something from the 80s and it's like nope way too slow buds you need to yeah. speed it up yeah yeah and, you're and, right and, and and kenobi like wanted to do nuance and there's times i think where they were trying to do a nuanced performance with obi-wan and kenobi and letting things breathe but then you want to put a little bit of action and sometimes those moments just just don't go together like like the the alea moment is is clearly when she's running and she gets in the capture sack that's meant to be like wake up here we go a little bit but in the end of the day that's just not the moment for it yeah i i agree i i think it is figuring out where the balance is between um making difficult choices for a movie right we know that it happens and we'll talk a little bit uh, about some movie edits and things. When you watch, there's there's a great series on Netflix, the the movies that made us. It's oh, a yeah, great yeah. series. If you it's haven't fun. seen it, go check that out. There's some great things in there, and you can see that some heart wrenching cuts that that directors have to make, and there are other things coming. Uh, we we have the promise of this light and magic uh, series coming on uh, Disney Plus. We haven't we, seen that. We don't know what that is about. No. What, what light, is in it? I don't even know. Never heard of light magic before. Is it about Mickey Mouse? I hope I don't magic know. doesn't <laughs> interfere with your religious beliefs, my friend Santa. <laughs> that sounds like it's very occulty. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but but you, you get to see where they make heart-wrenching uh, cuts. Yeah, and uh, there's there's a, a lot of criticism going around for our friend Taika Watiti, you know, close mm-hmm. personal friend of Jason Ward. Uh, Taika Watiti. No. I, I saw I, I saw I saw him direct that 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 last episode of Mando for like four hours one day, which at the time I didn't really know who he was. Oh, and then now I look back on it, I'm like, that's pretty rad. I guess I'm mean, like looking back, you know what I mean? Like it's completely it was, rad. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but he he made some cuts from Thor: Love and Thunder. And and the one that made its way around from the uh, the interwebs in the Twitter sphere was uh, this this one where the the actress was supposed to be startled by a, a, a figure waking up, and he cut out the figure waking up, and she's still startled, like she's standing mm-hmm. there, and all of a sudden, like <gasps> for no reason, right? No reason at all. <laughs> like all of a sudden, like, <laughs> yeah. and, and it's just. It, it, it's it's hilarious, but it happened because the cut and he didn't catch that and whatnot. So it's a bit of a, it, it, he's taken a, a bit of heat from it and people are beginning to divide on Taika Waititi doing Star Wars. But it, you see where like in uh, Light and Magic, which is Disney Plus uh, ran a, a little promo saying, hey, we've got this show coming, right? And there's, there's, um, there's a screener that that some folks have been able to see, uh, and the the uh, ban on that screener 
It, it comes next week. So next week, there could be more discussion about some of the content in yeah, there. The embargo is lifted on Monday. The, the embargo lifts Monday. So we could talk about it more maybe next week. But with those fan, or, or not fan, it with, with uh, directors having to make severe cuts that, that hurt, right? Um, and you can see it in pretty much anything. There's another, I, I watched last week, you can see this right now on Disney Plus uh, if you if you are <laughs> of the mind too. Uh, I know X Wing's going to drop from here immediately and go watch. Uh, there are cuts from the Last Jedi, where Brian Johnson gives his commentary about having to cut them that uh, X Wing has been waiting for forever. I know he loves the Last Jedi so much that uh, any any uh, director commentary would be of great interest uh, for my friend. Oh, I mean, have you seen his caretaker <laughs> cosplay? It's really good. He's a he's a sexy frog lady, he's a sexy frogman. He does it. He pulls it off. <laughs> I, but in there, he made several cuts, and okay. in those cuts, you could hear him talk about how excruciating it was to make certain cuts because of the reasoning for wanted him, but the pacing he needed he's to like, make. Decisions. Yeah, he's, they're, they're, no, there's like a really good moment where he's like, yeah, then like Mike Zero got the scoop where Luke pulls the Star Destroyer <laughs> down, but he's Jeff Bridges. I had to cut it because like well, people were like, why is Mark Hamill becoming Jeff Bridges and why is he pulling the Star Destroyer <laughs> down from the other movie? Well, and legit, hey, uh, Lucas made some changes to uh, Star Wars because some what? ideas happened to show up in other projects that were too mm -hmm. similar to his. And he's like... Oh, they stole my idea. The, like the, the, the Millennium Falcon was originally a taco. Then he's like, let's make it a hamburger. <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> it was a hot dog. He's like, hot so, dog. Yeah. Star, Star Destroyers are pizza. That's what he said. It was a really good moment. It was so good. <laughs> Quentin, I'm so confused. We're, we're talking two side, in, inside baseball. Sorry. Sorry. We're, we're having stupid. fun. We're just being we're, stupid. We are. We're being silly. But, um, the, um, with with Kenobi, they need to find this balance. Like, where do you need to make the the cuts? Maybe you're in love with that chase scene. It was really cute, and you spent a day doing it, whatever. But at the end of the day, it doesn't work in the pacing, right? Yeah. Or you've got the chase scene with the Vespa speeders, and it just the pacing just isn't at all on point. And you've got to go back, and you got to either re-shoot it or you've got to re-edit it, cut it so that it plays different, uh, so that it works. And I don't yeah. think enough of that happened with Kenobi, right? I was watching, I put on Mandalorian last night to try to get Penny to go to bed. I was like, let's watch Mandalorian because you know, she'll fall asleep when we start watching it usually. So like I put it on, you know what I noticed about what's good about Mandalorian is he has that cowboy swagger thing going on where he's always like, what? Yeah, like he doesn't move. He's not fast. So his pacing is consistent all the time. Like, like you know exactly how the scenes are probably going to go when you have that cowboy dude in those frames all the time. He, he doesn't really get faster. He doesn't that's really great. get too slow, though. You know what I mean? But that's that's where um, – but when you but when they step away from that, that's when we seem to have the problem. <laughs> Why re-edit when you just tell the fans you're wrong? <laughs> that's – that's fair. That's, that's fair, Dave. And so I, I would say this Kenobi fan edit shows you many scenes that are cut better that Kenobi would have benefited from. But it also, because they've set this arbitrary two and a half hour time limit, you could tell they're absolutely shooting for two and a half hours. It ends at 229.37 or something like that, right? <laughs> it just, it, it, had they given it another 10, 15 minutes, it could have it could have really um, benefited from being able to explore some of it more. And I think the show itself would have benefited from it as evidenced by this fan edit, right? So, Well, uh, Nikki, all of the Mando directors are the same directors as everything else. At this point, Mando has been like the testing ground for all of the other directors. Deborah Chow was on Mando, Robert Rodriguez, you know, for the most part. It's all, yeah. it's all the Taika same people. And, and, and Bryce Dallas Howard, right. Yeah. Uh, which Mando's so, like Star Wars College right now. And then if you if you get good grades in Star Wars College, you get to go on and teach a Star Wars class. Well, it does. It, I think that's a good point. And we talked about 
Taika Waititi just a second ago uh, mm-hmm. in uh, his edit of Love and Thunder is is not perfect. Okay. And Taika's, Taika's brand of humor, a lot of people are a little leery of. And uh, there's there's some concern after Love and Thunder. Should Taika even be doing a Star Wars movie? Now, we talked about this last week. So this isn't new for us, but um, it, it's still being rehashed in the community. And um, I, I just want to kind of go back to the point like you just made. Mandalorian is like Star Wars College. And Taika has been doing his coursework, right? He's He's gotten his grades. He's gone in. He's created some really good episodes uh, that that uh, you know his his report card is is strong, right? Yeah, top of the class. So um, it ain't hard on the eyes either. They say, <laughs> right? right, right. And he is a superstar. Like, mm-hmm. uh, and, and so the question is, like, has his star burned out, or is his star take in a tarnished now? I, I I don't think so. From no. seeing the content that he's done for Star Wars, and knowing, like I I can't help but uh, remember going back to the the docu series where you see like uh, uh, Dave Filoni and John Favreau bantering about different things, and even Taika talks about how you've got Dave there to kind of set guide rails to keep him from going off the reservation too far. Right. So I think with a Taika Watiti Star Wars movie project, and as we, I think Meg brought it up last week, or, and you and I talked about it, is if he's in a different time era, not using legacy characters, not using a timeline that's, that's already really constricted in narrow and a narrow uh, rails, right? He's got a wider lane. And uh, he's got somebody like Dave Filoni there to help keep him within the lane and to help steer the, the ship. I, I think it can be fantastic Star Wars. And um, I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, uh, uh, oh, oh Quint, Quentin Time podcast. Quentin hung out with me yesterday. Good time. He I hung did. out with him a few days ago. Good time. Yes. I yes. like the show a lot. Oh, I love I love Quentin. Uh, his he does a great podcast. His interviews are are spot on. Really he's good. Too guy. reasonable. I'm going to say he's way too reasonable and grounded of a person. He he really is good. He's really good. He's, this, he's like yeah. He's like he's like he's like you know I don't know if that's fair. And you're just like okay, you're right. Every right. time you talk to him, you're like man, this guy's too reasonable. Like, where's the hyperbole? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Where's the, exactly? Where's the hyperbole? Where's the uh, uh, hyper reaction to something? Uh, yeah, uh, it, Disney Plus isn't in any requirement to stick to TV length episodes, right? They and, and they've shown us this. They like they've had twenty four minute episodes and fifty four minute episodes yeah. of the same series. So you know, so what if you cut it down and instead of it being forty seven minutes, it's thirty two minutes? Like if it makes it better, do that. Right. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's I, I, I do think that like he's right. But what I will say is, for instance, let's just pretend like what if they took one of those episodes and they made it the best episode ever? Let's just pretend. OK. For this, yeah. But it was 22 minutes long. Oh, then they would be damned if they do damned if they don't, because it would be the right choice to put it out at 22 minutes. But everybody would say that wasn't enough. And, and and it's it's so they they are on the weekly that is like when the reviews come and stuff they kind of do have to offer a full I sat down and had a Star Wars experience thing at the same time like that's still what they have to do in in each of these episodes and and it's what's weird is it's only relevant upon with the weekly release oh if yeah they dropped it all at once it would be they wouldn't have the issue so, which True. I think they should I should think they should just drop it all at once because I can't go buy Mandalorian right. As far as I know, I can't. Not no. legally. It's all bootlegs on Amazon yeah, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And so, like, I'm going to keep Disney Plus because I'm going to want to watch it. And it's only like seven bucks, so I don't mind. Yeah. Uh, 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 Nikki, Nikki's still, comment. Oh, Nikki. 
I'm going to I'm going to uh, counter Nikki's comment with Meg's comment right here. So, Nikki, oh. thank you for the super chat. She says Tyka's comment about not not wanting to research Star Wars. Like he, he, he so he did say something like, "Look, there are hundreds of books. I'm not going to go read hundreds of books and I'm not and either. Do all the homework. Like it's <laughs> it's too it's it's too tasking, right? Too too long. I don't have that kind of time on my hands. Not not interested in doing that. Yeah. So she said, not wanting to do the research bothered me more than the Portman thing. We need more fans direct. So I'm gonna I'm gonna counter uh, that with uh, this one. Santa should direct a Star Wars movie. The Santa cut sounds like a horror. You know, yeah. any Santa cut has got to have a reference to Ray uh, Palpatine Skywalker in it. I'm just saying, like you know, Nikki, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> Makes it it sounds like a whore. <laughs> um. The one, the one thing that I, I would say to that kind of thing, though, that needs to be acknowledged is that whenever you're working on something with Star Wars, even if it's, you know, JJ or somebody, let's just, I don't know who, Dave Filoni, at the end of the day, you are still going to have meetings. You're still going to have the Pablo Hidalgo and, and the Leland G's telling you, here's what's going on. Here's what this canon is. And here's why we did it at, at the same time. So uh, he could sit there and, re and research what was was relevant to whatever he's doing. But at the same time, they're, they're going to tell him that stuff. For instance, if he's doing a gladiatorial Star Wars story set during the dark times, they're going to tell him, well, here's what's up. Like Black Crescenton, he's a fighter at this time. He's been in these things. That's a character you can use, but you can't kill him because he lives. In, you know, like all of that stuff is just going to get explained, explained to them. I also think that if they get to, when you get, you need somebody who has one foot in understanding it, but not so steeped in that they, that they lose perspective. Fans lose perspective of what's going to work for us, but also what's going to work for like cousin Tony, cousin Tony down the street needs to be able to go, Oh, I saw a star Wars and it was fun. Like you have to be able, it has to work on both of those kinds of levels. That's where I think Taika kind of is, is a, is a good fit for this kind of stuff. I'm not saying he's infallible or, you know, the reaction shot being in there wasn't dumb. It was, I mean, but also that reaction shot being in there, nobody got that. That was all on Taika. I think that's a massive failing on their part, to be honest with you guys. So I, I didn't know Meg, about that until just now. That's a massive failing. Yeah. It, Meg asked a, a, a question that, that spurs a, or it, it makes a comment that spurs a question that I think is worth asking. Uh, 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 maybe we should do a poll. We should do a poll. I hear, mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna go in here into the control room. I'm gonna create a poll. A sand, right? sand is candy cane. Here, <laughs> Sorry. Here we go. Uh, 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 who would you rather chill and drink with? All right, Taika Watiti uh, or uh. uh Liam Neeson, right? Hmm. Oh, Liam Neeson, totally. You want to know why? <laughs> Taika's Tyka, not going to leave. You're going home alone if you go with Taika. He's right. not. He's going home with, with both arms. Oh, yeah. He's going home alone. <laughs> Liam, you're going to have a good time. He's going to piss his pants, make you look good, and you have a chance. Right. You're still in the That's game. <laughs> so... <laughs> Qui-Gon Jin, that, that's my vote. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you 100% on that, right? <laughs> like, you, you go hanging out with, with Taika. Uh, the more he drinks, the more cool he gets. And he leaves yeah. with, with all the available uh, yeah. dates. I, I mean, yeah. the, the men, the women, the everybody's so, leaving with Taika. They're these leaving are bad maze handmaidens. <laughs> I didn't read that shit. And then he leaves. And you're right. like, well, now he knows all about the bad maze handmaidens. Right. Liam Neeson, he's going to be drinking, he's going to piss yeah. himself, and then you're like, you know, he's, he's like, the cool guy to hang out like with. This. He's like this. He's like, <laughs> one one lightsaber kills killed me. Didn't kill anybody else. Killed me, though. Why? Why, George Lucas? Why? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm hanging out with Liam Neeson, uh, you know, every day. I, and then Pablo Hidalgo <laughs> comes in. He's like, oh, actually, um, hatred kept him alive. And you're very not. Get out, person. Pablo. Go. Shoot. <laughs> you're not invited to our party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So much fun. Um, so so we've, we uh, have some more fun things to talk about. 
And uh, so we talked about Taika, right? We've talked about uh, the Kenobi edit. This yeah. is Andor leaks. So uh, you and Meg have both done fantastic jobs of covering this already. I, I, I don't know that how deep we'll go into this, but uh, there's, there's uh, a site where they filmed and there's a lot of conjecture about where that site could be uh, used. Is that Utapau? Is it, uh, you mentioned another place. Um, uh, oh shoot, what is it? Walmart. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Boss no, no. Bounty. Boss <coughs> Bounty. It's Boss Bounty. <laughs> no, no. Uh, 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 Bes Bespin. Bespin? Isn't it? What'd you say? Yeah. Uh, anyhow. Uh, Yavin 4, that was remembers. it. Yavin 4, that was it. Yavin I lived 4. there today. I don't remember <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Yavin 4. Um, yeah, so um, I, I'm with Meg, I think, on the Utapau. I yeah. think there's a lot of evidence that, the, it, and you, again, you posted the pictures as well. I know our friend Baymax did some of the homework, and uh, Meg has done the homework. Uh, I I think the very strong possibility that we're going to see Utapau in mm. uh, so Andor. It, it convinced you. you I am convinced. convinced. I am How convinced. convinced on a percent, percentage level. I am like 85% convinced. I am 48% convinced. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm leaning towards no. But, oh. but, but I'm like, you know, I don't know. And and you know it 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 feels I don't feel like I don't feel like we got the smoking gun yet. I feel like it's very circumstantial, and I want to see I want something to validate the heart of those leaks, so to speak. Yeah. Like and yeah. right now everything I don't feel like anything in it will be validated even in the in the next trailer. That Meg reminded me that we're gonna get. Well, I, get all trailer. I have to do is listen to Meg's voice. Mm -hmm. That that lovely beautiful. Uh, streaming voice and whatever she says i believe I just, you know i i, I, I was laughing <laughs> i mean i really i i don't want to i don't want to let this get to meg's head but meg literally has the best voice out of anybody doing star wars stuff amen 100 like, 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 like easily it's, it's not yeah, close i, I can <laughs> listen to it i can listen to it in the morning i can't listen to any and no like like when i'm drinking coffee it's fine it doesn't yes. piss me off that's not true most of you and myself <laughs> right. and um but i see yeah, i saw somebody on twitter going oh worst most annoying voice and i'm like that's just that's just that's just some pathetic dude trying to nag a girl on the internet like that's what i thought when i saw it and i was like what an asshole look uh, meg is big her voice is is uh absolutely uh icing on the cake like her content is so good yeah, she does her homework. She does uh, fantastic content, and then you get to listen to that beautiful voice that just uh, sells it. So for me, uh, if Meg says Utapau, I'm like, okay, okay, it's Utapau. I don't care what I, Jason I sh says. I should remake one no. of one of Meg's videos. I should like take it and like redo the audio, and then wait for those guys to to, to post that that stuff, and then I'll like I'll be like fixed, and I'll post it right after with me doing it. And then see what they say. Yeah. No. <laughs> and Nikki, I totally, I totally uh, get the innuendo in here. That's why I highlighted it. That's that's why, that's why I highlighted it. Uh, it's it's fantastic. So uh, look, um, I think, and Meg posted earlier. We saw where they did uh, a lot of filming. They're doing location yeah. filming for a great. Uh, uh, percentage of Andor. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of it is location shot, uh, which will help a lot. And then the, uh, I'm I'm certain they use the volume as well, the stagecraft. Uh, but the amount of location shooting was so good that I think people are going to feel like it represents Star Wars in a way that kind of tickles the nostalgia region I, of I your have, brain. I have like like a, a like a correction I keep meaning to make on my show that I keep forgetting and you just reminded me of it when you talked about you, you know you know that that the volume stuff we, we were going back and forth on my show about 
that bell scene from the trailer is that yes. the volume or not and i'm not saying it's not the volume but in little marlo where they filmed that they were that where that set was that bell is there oh so i'm like is that i think it might actually be the the actual on location filming excuse me with the background redone with interesting the background thought in. something that dope. that i imagine they'll probably cover in that light and magic show is how they um uh, will cut in uh paintings around uh, uh film to extend a scene say for example where uh obi-wan kenobi is shutting off the power generator there right or the shield generator yeah where that extends down that's a painting right and then they cut the glass in there and they put the film behind it and it and it fits in sort of like you would do with blue screen like that except without blue screen and this right. is in the, the 1978 making of Star Wars on television, VHS from Kellogg's, Disney. Exactly. You're not exactly. Sort of, sort of like the same sort of thing from uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Or, or, or yeah. Uh, do the you, know about, do you know about, about Liam Neeson and Phantom Menace? What happened there? Uh, Cherry wise? Have you heard of this? I, I, I don't know. So when they, they had Rick McCallum was like, look, we could build the sets to be six feet tall and then we don't need to buy lumber to make it go 10 feet up or you know four feet up or whatever for the most part so we could save hundreds of thousands of dollars if we sh or millions of dollars in, in the end if we only make the sets be like you know six five yeah and then so they they go they budget the whole movie they, they start making all the sets then they cast liam neeson who's a giant man and he was so, so tall that it ended up costing them uh, like like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars because they had to go and they had to add like a couple of inches to every single set in the end to make Liam Neeson work in those in those scenes. Well, it, it reminds me of uh, and, and our friend uh, here who's who's been in the chat. I've seen him a couple times here. Will Morgan from Meta Egg. He did a great uh, uh, video on things that are in the cut. Right? And have you heard his voice? I call him Will Morgan Freeman. He is fantastic. I, I love his, his brain is, uh, he has a beautiful mind. Put it that way. Smart uh, really, really brilliant guy. And uh, he pointed out the scene in uh, Empire Strikes Back where Luke falls or jumps into the, you know, right after uh, Luke, I am your father. No. And he jumps, mm -hmm. right? Uh, where you can see him bounce. <laughs> on, on the trampoline <laughs> on the trampoline right so, um, <laughs> same, yeah same there, there was like there used to be an error that's been fixed where when they're in the bespin carbon freezing chamber yeah and then he goes and he goes to like jump he goes to jump down you oh could, yeah that's you it see you can see like the very you can hear it at one point which i thought was, thought was weird because it's adr so i don't know why you could you could but you could hear a noise and it and then but the the way that the noise was set, you can see the top of his head. Oh. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they that was it. it yeah, yeah, it, it it's really good. It's really really good. Uh, so, <laughs> um, the same thing, right? Where they use that painting kind of to, to fill in the space underneath. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, very much could be the same sort of thing where with that striking the bell, where it's done on site, and then you get a matte painting or what do they call that. When they uh, Star Wars the Taco Bell, <laughs> oh, I'm, so, I'm, I'm hungry for tacos today. Have you noticed ah, that? I hear that. I hear I that. Going back to it, I'm like, you know what? I, I like Star Wars Meg's voice in the morning and tacos. I've heard that they have very few Taco Bell in Australia. That's what. From watching your yeah. show, it's something I've learned. Chris says they got Taco Bill, but, yeah. then, but then he messaged us and they opened up a Taco Bell right next to him. They're Very exciting. Taco Bell now. He's ready to make a run for the border. Yeah, he should. He should. Uh, <laughs> they, don't, they don't say that one anymore, do they? Andy Circus is in Andor. You know, I had forgotten it. I, I don't know that I knew it. I well, don't know that I knew it to forget it. I, I have, I, I've heard things about that. And I, I had that like pretty early on. I had like a report about that. But I still have not got any hard evidence for it still. Ah. And they were filming Batman at the time, which which made it really difficult to figure out if he was just on the Star Wars set 
or if he was in it. But I've yeah. heard a rumor that he wears the white uniform. Ooh. And and I was like, really? Somebody and I was just like, but I don't know if it's but once again, I'm like, I'm I'm like fifty one percent on that because the person who told me I trust. But it was so like it was so word of mouth based rumor. Yeah. I'm I'm a little bit like where <laughs> when are when are they gonna when are they gonna show us? I'm not I'm not clicking on Meg's comment. I'm not doing it. But you know, Quentin Time Podcast, a five dollar super chat. Thank you for that. Mentions Will Morgan, my mind immediately. Andy DeFriends, <laughs> tall drink of water. <laughs> <laughs> you read Meg's comment. I could tell. I could tell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Meg also said uh Snoke and Mando season three is a very real possibility. Yeah. Uh and and w- in which X Wing said, Okay, I'm out. <laughs> Or Nikki, Nikki said, "I'm out." Yeah. yeah. Well, the I mean, maybe you know, it, it could just be really bad. At the same time, I mean, it's always an opportunity for improvement, right? I mean, if you if it really didn't work, there's always a chance that it it, it could make it it could make it better for for you in the end. I mean, there's there's a there's a chance. Meg and Nikki, you're both being filthy. You're filthy. <laughs> Meg for soft tacos. <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness. <coughs> oh, uh, so uh, Mando season three, the, uh, the, the celebration trailer has leaked and it keeps getting uh, killed on YouTube. I will say this. If you are a member of our Discord community, you can find it there. So if you've not joined us on Discord and done all the things, please do that. It, there's, there's benefits to membership. You should you should go check that out. Uh, in that trailer, there's some fascinating fascinating scenes, and Meg covered part of it this morning. There are things uh, there that are are very exciting. Um, one of which being Mandalore, right? You can definitely see Mandalore uh, in a uh, yes fan gesture. Join the membership, you slackers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Adam. Uh, Give him uh, no excuse to not pay the elves. No excuses. No. Oh, you know, we're going to have a cutback here. Oh, oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> if he has enough of you guys, he has no excuse. Uh, and- Baymax, don't, don't, don't do this. Don't do this. Uh, uh, because Nikki Nikki broke me one time. I like a beefy that. taco sometimes. Oh. Don't, don't, don't even, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I I mean, I was, I was broke for, uh, and every time she would bring it back up, I would completely lose it. Uh, Very funny. Good call back. uh, Can can we, can we give a little bit of condolences to, to, to to Quentin's sourdough bread though? I mean, it it didn't, it didn't work out yesterday. Oh no, that's, that is sad. I have to try it again. I, I, I I named it sourdough Doku, right? Come on, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that trailer. Uh, I, I agree with many comments. Like, oh. why have we not gotten it yet? Uh, what are they holding out for? Like that, the quality of that trailer looked like a finished product. I didn't see anything in it. Uh, again, the quality of it is not not great, but uh, or the, of the version we got. Right, it's over mm-hmm. somebody's head. You see the back of somebody's noggin coming in the sh- in the shot and things like that. Uh, uh, but it uh, the the product that was actually shown on the screen looks fantastic. Why haven't they brought that um, out yet? I think they are aware that if you are willing to watch a bootlegged trailer, you'll watch it. The high quality one twice you, you when that when they actually do put it out you will watch it and that your average consumer will not seek out or watch a bootleg trailer so they're able i think they think they're able to have their cake and eat it too i i hate it but i think that's i think that's the reality you might be right you might be right um that that makes sense to me mm-hmm. that it is a bit of a marketing trick right yeah but, We'll let them leak it. They they keep they keep uh, axing it every time it re-uploads. All right, it gets taken down again. Uh, yeah. 
Which when, is, whenever they whenever they've called me to like bitch me out in the past, <laughs> they've been like, "We know you're going to see all of the marketing stuff. We, we know." So 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 I could imagine their shrill little voices going, "We well, know you're going to leak it. You know you're going to film it when we tell you not to Star Wars." Fan. So they're they're they are aware that it that's going to happen. They just like they just know that it you know the people who will watch it are maniacs like me and you but right and and then and then when they put the good one out we'll be like cool so i, Anyways, I would say right? this C catch meg's video from today she does a fantastic mm -hmm. job of kind of summarizing some of the stuff in there and with without crossing the line uh and come check it out on discord you can see the 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 full trailer there and get a, a sense for it there's some exciting stuff though and uh, I will say tie-ins to the sequels are reinforced there again. We talked about this uh, before, but you do get Babu Frick and those Andulans or and and Del I can't remember the, what their species are, but they're in there. Uh, very good. I call, I call them the Frickers, <laughs> the little Frickers. Babu Frick and the little Frickers. Fr little Frickers. Uh little Frickers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, it. It's a great trailer, though. Uh, really mm -hmm. well done. And uh, yeah. has a lot of little Easter eggs in there for those of us who have watched uh, Rebels. Uh, unlike Rob Sketchcraft, who's yeah. a loser. I, he, 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 he's, <laughs> a little, he's, a little, he's a little loser. He's a little, he is. Just, I know. Just a little loser. He's just gross. I, I, go draw <laughs> something, loser. How about go draw a clue? Uh, draw a clue. There you go. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> uh, we we tease. We tease. Uh, but because uh, because Rob has no compunction about mocking me. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, we, we me Megan and I were. I sound like I said Megan. Meg and I were talking Megan. about that that helmet from that trailer last night. Like like really really quickly. Or oh, I'm trying to find it. Um. Yeah, like like this one. Sorry, you know that, oh, yeah, that yeah. one, the yellow one, and and I think that like you know uh, both Megan Baymax are like yeah, it looks like kind of like Boba Fett's original scheme, you know. Yeah. For what it's worth, I don't think it's really connected, but I'm just throwing out there as like a hail mary, just in case it ends up being the case. Is there was this random weirdo? Yes, in, I saw in, that. Uh, yeah, in uh, uh, friends, old friends, not forgotten. And it just like doesn't really have a lot to do. It has kind of has a fancy thing on his shoulder, but it's also very similar colors, like color schemes. And I don't think I don't think we see that person die. So. <laughs> what century is compunction from? <laughs> I, compunction. I, I can't tell you. <laughs> you, wait, you don't you don't listen to compunk rock? That, that's that's computer punk. I made it up. It's a thing I just made up now. It's computer a real punk word. Called, I didn't just compunction. make it up. <laughs> Compunction. Little compunkers. <laughs> I do Bob like the watch period uh, uh, history pieces. Like watch so periods? It, it's, it's, it's fun. I, I, I yeah. enjoy it. Uh, like, <laughs> like uh, uh, what, what is the one? It sounds like something, but it's not that. It's uh, 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 with the family over in uh, England back in the day. Uh, oh, shoot. It a big show. Downton Abbey. Uh, You're talking about Downton Abbey. Abbey. Downton. Downton. Not downtown. Downton. The, the, ver the very first time I ever heard that, I thought it was called Downtown Abbey, and then I said it, and then somebody else mentioned it like five minutes later to my friend, and he's all Downtown Abbey, and I was like Downton Abbey, you idiot. <laughs> it was so I felt so good. It was like it was perfect. Exactly, Downton Abbey. Uh, right. I enjoyed that kind of thing. Uh, so, yeah. uh, it and. Uh, so anyway, they're so fancy with the <coughs> funny way of talking. They all sound like Star Wars Meg to me. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, so uh, Mando season three, uh, that trailer is great. And uh, somebody did put in a comment. It seems that he abandons the the uh, Grogu uh, seat to put a astromech droid back in there. R five D four man. It does look like R five D four in the trailer. Uh, can't can't confirm that that is it's too washed the out case. it's too washed out i like i like mess with the colors a lot on, on the show i'm doing today i did my best to like edit the images to try to like see if i could bring anything out of what was there it's okay yeah. 
but yeah, on that one, it was, it was pretty inconclusive, but R five D four is at what's her name's place. He is. So uh, if she's back in the season and he goes back there, then I, I think there's a good chance that's where he gets Yeah, that there door. is red on the R five. You can see that. Is, I, I do agree. I, I mean, the probability that it is R five D four is high. I'm going to put it that way. I'm, I'm going to go with 51% on that as opposed to, <laughs> to the other leak from earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I do bet that it is R5-D4 and uh, they get rid of the Grogu hatch. Uh, the Grogu, he, he, he is in Mando's lap as Mando's taking a little nappy nap, which which is a, a, a little concerning because Grogu wakes up and he's got, you know, access to the controls. Who knows? Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, when I when I was like kind of like frame by framing it, um, you do get a lot of you get a lot of little moments that are kind of dispersed throughout it of Grogu basically sitting on Din's lap in the 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 seat, and then he lets him take them to hyperspace. Like yeah, you see his little hand go and like grab you know grab the lever or whatever and pull it, and yeah, it was fun. Left Coast Graphics says hundred percent, hundred percent. So he's uh, uh, greater you than wanna, your fifty-two percent. You want to know what I heard about about our old friend R five D four? What's that? And if this is this goes this goes on for a very long time, is that R five was made by the probably the Neil Scanlon people at Pinewood for the Kenobi film that never happened. One of the first things that got put together. Then once that got shelled, they ended up shipping it out here to El Segundo. Ooh. And then, and then it ended up, and it was going to be in an earlier episode of Mando that didn't make the cut or whatever. Then got pushed around. I think. I think that's how it went. But yeah, but that was originally made for the uh, Kenobi film. And uh, I would like. I hope if anybody ever has a chance to ask, I think now's the time to start asking about that because before everyone was like, "Oh, we can't talk about the Kenobi it was a movie. We never even announced it," and they were being really weird about it. Right, right. And so I, I think, um, yeah, but I, I, I know for a fact that's accurate. So I'm curious if, if it's the same one that they keep using or if it's a different one by now. But. Uh, and Mike Porter, I am not going to do that. I, 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 I'm, I may not be a smart man, but I know better than to read all of Meg's comments. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that at all. Um, there, right. there I'll is. Where's that? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, there was a, a a comment here. Where was it? Where was it? Where is it? R five D four finally getting off planet. Uh, that's that's uh, there's a great uh, story about R five D four and R two D two in the the, the sand crawler mm -hmm. having a little convo where uh, where R two uh, knows that R five's going to be sold and says, hey. You got to blow your motivator or something to, to make sure I get this gig. It is I've got an important message I got to get to uh, old Ben and uh, R five takes one for the team, blows the motivator on purpose. So that, I mean that's a that's <laughs> that's in. I, I just want Lucas to go back to the glory days of Star Wars, like back you know like vintage Star Wars when it was good, you know, like when R five D four split open and had a missile inside of him. Oh, remember that? No. The, the original uh, Power of the Force 95, they uh, which is vintage now, which to us is like, what? But yeah, it's, it's considered vintage now. And the original R5-D4, his head didn't turn, he but he split in half and a missile shot out. It was terrible. Oh. Stupidest thing they could have done because they didn't believe they didn't believe in R5. <laughs> and now here we are. They're all fired. And R5 is a star. That's right. He, he is the real star of uh, of A New Hope. Because, you know, without R5 taking one for the team, R2 stays on the, the the sand crawler, gets picked for parts, and Ben never gets the message. I, I <laughs> as, a, as a kid, though, the original Kenner R5-D4, something about it, like, I it, that might have been my, my first feeling of nostalgia. Nice. And we're talking, I'm like, I'm like five or six. Right. And I'm like, remember remember getting whenever i would see r5d4 i would buy him again um it was, i have and, and then i would be just i would open it and be disappointed in the experience I, I have not seen this vader comic uh meg and i see uh ruben also saying lump in my throat over that vader comic i have not seen that he uh, in that in the in the comic he 
gets on an app and he has really a good connection with with this girl. She looks like Padme. Her name is is Sabe, and then she ghosts him at the end. He yeah he accidentally just swiped, he doesn't swiped know he right. He he got the d- directionally challenged. Oh, no! I hate when you accidentally hit the wrong right. way. Yeah yeah. Like, what we were gonna get and married. Then he, and then he goes no no. Like, you know. <laughs> And then R five D four is like she's mine now. <laughs> that's exactly, that's exactly how it happened. <laughs> his, his his Tinder profile also is extremely motivated. It's, like, uh, it's, it's the basically Vader meets Anakin's childhood friends. Kidster, oh, it may, oh, there you go, a Kidster sighting. Jason, there you it's, go. I know, I know, I saw. I, I I'm I'm mixed. I'm mixed about it because it means. It means we can't have kids during live action, probably. Oh. Whenever I see that stuff, it both makes me happy and sad at the same time. You know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that, but it means that they're <laughs> locked into this version of Kidster. Baymax mentioned another Ochi bashing setting, uh, session just to trigger Bespin. Uh, I heard you kind of do a, a, a review of uh, Shadow of the Sith. Yeah. Uh, Ochi. I- I, you and I talked and you were like, I don't know if you could still lend books or not. And I was like, I wonder if you can. I was like, I was like, I'm going to Google that. And I opened up my email and there was like audible going, Hey, uh, you want a free credit subscribe and forget to cancel. I'm like, I'll take the free credit and I'll cancel. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, uh, and then I got, got the audio book. Yeah. I've, I've read on how to lend, uh, many times and mm-hmm. I keep trying, but every time I try, it fails. And so I've yeah. been trying to share it with you. I was happy to see that you had gotten it. Ochi does come across as a bit of a, of a, uh, arrogant turd. Like he's a dumbass. He's a dumbass. <laughs> like, he's just like, yeah, he's just, he's stupid. I mean, it, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if I, like I was saying yesterday, I don't know if I like it or, or I don't, I don't know if I like it, love it or hate it yet. Like remember, like remember stripes when they're going through the training and 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 Francis, <laughs> don't touch me, lighten mm-hmm. up, Francis, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> there's, up, there's a scene in yeah. the book where 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 Ochi's like, don't touch Ochi of Bestoon, Bestoon, like, yeah. lighten up, Ochi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he's like, it, it, it's it's really it's he, I think he talks about himself in third person at times <laughs> and you're just like <laughs> it's it's like i said like a part of me like loves it because it's ridiculous but another part of me is like i think this needed to be uh, i think this this depiction of this characterization needed to be done on screen to sell it like a little bit better like you know what i mean like i think it's all there <laughs> but but it's best spoon best Rem- re- remember saber spoons those yeah. make me fat <laughs> I kept buying I kept buying cereal to get all the saber spoons and I kept eating all the cereal. Probably getting a good 20 pounds trying to get saber spoons. <laughs> that, I do remember those. Yeah. I uh best spoon, best spoon. Uh best spoon. But, but yeah, maybe he, you uh, get best spoon bulletin to, to do like a cereal site called <laughs> Best Spoon. The bulletin. the uh the the uh voice of Ochi in there may not be helping. No in the I audiobook. Audiobook voices never help me. Yeah, it's it's always like, it's like, hi, I'm Padme. Oh, Anakin, what are you doing? And I'm just like, just just don't do the voice, man. Like they, 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 they try to make it like soft and everything. And I'm just like, oh. yeah. I, I I do wish that they just got like a group of voice actors completely on call and they're just like, here's your lines, and they just read them for five minutes, and we just like did it like a radio play a little bit more. The, the, yeah. the guy does a good job. I'm not knocking him like as an audio. That, that's audio. That's the genre of audio yeah. books. But Star Wars, I think, should push more into audio books slash radio drama. I think they got one little toe in there. Yeah, they do. Uh, and there's a couple of examples where they do bring in different actors instead of Mark Thompson. The Dooku one, one, right? The Dooku one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. was a good one. Yeah. Uh, what kyber crystal did I get? I got the purple one. And then I went into the store uh, just because Santa's colors are red and green. I went into the store and got a red one. Oh, uh, nice. So I, I, um, I, I still need to... Uh, ship your your um your uh blue crystal uh, i i was of two minds one is i'm super lazy and i was like oh i forgot and then the other mind was well what if i send it and it's like at the post office and then he can't go because he's not he can't go outside and he can't get it or something so i was like oh so i'll send it out tomorrow so that's all, it's all good it's all good yeah. it's all but good it's blue it's blue uh, that's great that's great uh that they're 
they're they're a lot of fun. I, just out of curiosity, I took the blade out of the uh, the one that I made at uh, at, at Galaxy's Edge. Mm -hmm. I took the blade out of here and I put it into here, wondering, hmm, what color will it be? What happens? What happens? It's still what blue. Happens? It's still blue. It's blue. Uh, you put the you put the uh, the blade that came with the Legacy Saber in. It's blue. You take the blade from here and put it in here. It's still blue. I was oh, I was interested in. That's mm, okay. Very. I, I, I've been trying to get it to like be white. It's like kyber crystals aren't real or something. Come I don't on. know. <laughs> <laughs> There's magic in there that tells it to change colors when you change the kyber crystal. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. The sabers have their color regardless of the blade. That's true and not true, Nikki, because in in these. If you change the kyber crystal color, same blade, it'll change color of the blade. That, so that's what it's supposed to do. Purple, that's purple what... makes it purple. I changed it to red; it turns red. Uh, and Jason sent me the blue. I put blue; it'll turn blue. The the same blade that's purple and red is also blue when I put it in the other other hilt. So there you go. Yeah, you can change the colors. You do uh, it. <laughs> you do it. Right, right. I meant the ones they sell, not the ones. Yes, yes, yes. I know, I know. So, um, Jason, I think that covers it for today. Okay. Uh, we do have a Mike Porter dad joke, Star Wars yeah, edition. It's a, I can't wait. I'm Here ready. We go. Mike, Mike. Here we go, Mike you. Porter. Bust my fat little gut. I know you're going to do it, Mike. I believe <laughs> in you. you. What do you call a carload of Star Wars loving circus workers with lightsabers? Perfect timing for the joke. One Wars. Oh, Attack of the Clowns. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Very good, Mike Porter. Thank you, sir. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, so, uh, you guys, I, I've had a lot of fun today. Uh, appreciate it, Jason. And uh, you're going to go uh, live this afternoon? Uh, in about 45 minutes. I'm Wonderful. Do it. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, and, and you guys go make sure you catch uh, Making Star Wars, the Making yep. Star Wars show. Come hang uh, out. I'll, I'll read whatever Meg types in there. She can write, type whatever she wants. I'll read. I don't oh, care. Oh, that's a dangerous I don't, I don't, thing. I don't know any better. That is a dangerous thing to commit to, Jason Ward. Yeah, I'll do it, though. I'll do <laughs> I'm it. Just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, I am going to hit the outro. And uh, Jason, thank you once again for being here. And we will see you next time, my friend. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. And until next time, <laughs> Merry Christmas. And may the force be with you always. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hot dang! <laughs>